Hello, and uh, welcome to another uh, tutorial. You get two today. Uh, and this is mostly for my own information, uh, but I want to share it with you guys just because it's relatively new to me. Uh, it's something that I haven't actually really noticed in Gaia until now, and I, it I could possibly, possibly be a new feature in the latest Bleeding Edge, but um, <clears throat> in any case, it is very important because it'll help you stay organized in your graphs. So normally you have something big and skiwampus and that something that just doesn't look all that appealing, right? So let's let's uh, in order to better show you this, I'm gonna change my node style real quick because then it'll bring all my nodes into view when it changes. All right, so this is what a typical node graph might look like in Gaia, and it's just a big gobbly gook of connected pieces. Let's go to an easier one to read, so it's gonna be extended. That's my favorite one, because everything lines up all nice and even. So anyway, some, some stuff here is overlaying each other, but in any case, you would have these different areas that are connected, and you have lines connecting everything, and it just looks like a big spaghetti net nest, and it's kind of difficult to digest everything. So what you can do is you can make different graphs that connect to each other to organize your workspace. So to show you that, I have my base terrain right here, which this all these nodes right here, all they do is they create my base terrain. So if we look at the last node here, this is my base terrain. This is the terrain that I put together. And then the next one is my erosion. So these are all the nodes that made my erosion. So if we look at the last one here, all this surface right here does is connect to this surface, and this just provides additional detail on top. So this surface is being masked by this height, so it's only affecting these top parts, but this surface affects everything else, and I did that just to bring in a tiny bit more detail into my overall landscape. So the next thing after that is my lower color. So if we were to look at the last node on here, this would be this mixer, all this is doing is coloring this lower area for me with all these selections. After that we have an upper color and again all this is doing is um, hosting all the nodes to color the rest of my landscape. So if we were to go to uh, this last node right here you can see that now we have our tops being colored. However I add one more, which is this worn rock, which is just a few things here, and not much, uh, and another mixer at the end, which is just mixing in this worn rock look, because it looked just a little bit too bland uh, with just the regular last mixer note I had here. I had to mix it up just a bit more and add just some worn rock that's kind of breaking and having filament coming out and whatnot, so uh, that's what I have here. So how do we make these node graphs separate from each other? Well, we'll do a quick, let me save it real fast. Well, I'll do a quick setup just so you can know how to, the basics of it works. But after you know the basics, that's about it. Everything else is, it flows together. So to make a new graph, um, all you do is click on this plus button and then you can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna stick with graph five. And then from here, you can add whatever nodes you want. However, if you want them to link together with other nodes, from what I've been able to find so far and what I've been playing with, it might not be the the best way to do it, but it's a way that works and it works for me, is you have to go to whatever node you want to connect to. So in this case, if I want to connect to the last node in my worn rock here, I have to go to that, uh, that graph, and then <clears throat> input whatever node I want. So from here it will be, let's say I want a normal map. So uh, let's throw in a normal, oh, a normal map. And we'll, actually, you know what? I made a mistake. Maybe I don't want this node in this graph. Well, that's fine. Uh, what we do is we just select the node, go to our menu, move selected nodes, and we're going to move it to erosion. So now the normal map is right here in erosion. It's not there, it's not here, so right here is where we want it. And we're gonna go ahead and connect it to this surface. But before we do that, if you connect it, 
and then go to uh, select your normal map and then do selected nodes to whatever you want to go graph 5 it'll automatically create the uh, portal output for you so you don't have to worry about manually creating it so now your normal map was created and then moved however you could create the portal yourself manually if you want you don't have to do it automatically you can still do it manually but it will automatically create that uh, portal for you so let's go back to the erosion and say we want to export I don't know a mesh so we go ahead and set up a mesher and again we just connect it here select our mesher and then move selected nodes to wherever we want it and in this case right here anyways it is that simple and how you get these colors is if anywhere up here, if you want to change any of these at any time, you just right click the tab, you can rename it, or you can set a color, set it whatever you want. In this case, orange looks like you only have a finite amount of color that you can uh, use, but maybe more will be added in the future, or maybe it'll, they'll give you like a swatch or something that you can select your own colors with, I don't know. Um, but any case, you can color code them and rename them and you can reorganize them so if I wanted these nodes for some reason to be at the front all I do is I drag and drop it over the first one and it'll shift it over and move it uh, so you can organize it however you want uh, it's super customizable that way and uh, if you have any questions or any concerns or if none of this made sense to you just let me know and I will uh, try to answer them to the best of my ability but lucky for you guys you get two uploads in a day and I'll see you in the next video because I think I'm going to call this one good.